I noticed when I read your life story on your website, MarsVenus.com, one of the things that you said was, women should not get lost in trying to earn a man's love. He should do things to win her over. And I think what you're saying here is if a woman is working too hard at it, she can actually take away a man's motivation, right? Nicely said. Well, you found the perfect quote to summarize what I was saying. Thank you. That was yeah. really, really. That's such a. Well, that's really from key, you. So thank you. <laughs> but it, it, it's it's a key key point. If if here I sit back as a therapist and watch relationships, hear relationships that go south. Almost always, there's a level of resentment that the woman has from giving more and not getting back, and there's a level of resentment in the man which comes from giving and not feeling valued and appreciated for what he gives. So from his point of view, (coughs) he's feeling she looks at him and says, you're not enough, what you do is not enough, you have to change because it's not enough, and that builds resentment in him. And that's his resentment to her is that she's saying you're not enough, and her resentment is she is saying he's not enough, he's not, not doing enough compared to how much she's giving. So that's that's the dynamic of where women can find their control in this, which is regulate how much you give to somebody. Don't give them more than they're giving to you. It's a little dance, and it's the opposite you know, of the golden rule, which is give unto others what you would want them to give unto you. That's a beautiful rule and sentiment, you know, give love, but you have to find the way of giving that works for the other person. So let me try mm-hmm. to make this real concrete for a woman on a date with a guy. Okay, so oh, how would you? Be wonderful. Yeah, how would you apply this sort of philosophical ideas that we're talking about here? Is on a date, you know, but basically what you would do is make sure that the guy never talks more than you do. Okay, you can you can talk more than he. That's fine. Make sure that he doesn't talk more. Because if he's talking all the time, he doesn't bond with you. He doesn't get to connect with you. And also, you feel like he's not connecting with you either. So just don't feel obligated. But if you're following the golden rule and you're giving to him what you want, well, you want him to hear you and be interested in you. So you're going to take time to listen and be interested in him. You're going to ask him more questions and more questions. But a part of you is really wanting him to also ask you questions to get to know you. And he's not going to do that. He'll just keep talking about him. And he will not bond with you, and you will not bond with him. And so it kind of goes south. So that's one aspect of that's something you can regulate. Just make sure that you don't encourage him by asking questions to talk more. And when he finishes a sentence, then go off and talk about something else or talk about what he just said. But here's the way to talk about what he said is these are three phrases that will transform your dating experience, your courting experience, your marriage experience, your life experience with men, and you should apply them today. Just even doing these three simple things in the context of a lot of what we're learning here. But it's an anchor into coming back to you, to finding the femininity in you and awakening the masculinity in men. Because it's only when a man's masculine energies come forth that he's willing to show up and make a commitment. When men go to their female side, ironically, they're they're not really good at making a commitment. They they want people to do things for them as opposed to feeling that, you know, I stand for you. So to to rise a man's testosterone, and, you know, in the past it's sort of been derogatory, in a derogative way it's been called stroking his ego, but actually, mm-hmm. it's basically supporting him, giving love to him in a way that works best for him. And that means it's going to trigger and raise the testosterone that makes him feel uh, more vibrant, healthier, uh, more love for self. Uh, his body has less stress and so forth. So here's the three things. One is he's talking along and you're just nodding your head. And, and before you shift the subject or talk about what he's saying, basically say use the phrase, Good idea. <laughs> it's a simple phrase, but that's a that's a good idea. <laughs> good idea. Immediate, immediate you'll watch, and you you do this all the time with men and in and, and, and intimate relationships and work relationships. If you just say to a guy, whenever you truly feel it, 
that's a good idea. Well, that's a good idea. Because, you know, you can be going along in a conversation and think that's a good idea, but not realize how valuable it is to say that out loud. The flip side of this is what I tell men all the time, which is married men. I'll say, you know, you love her. Why don't you tell her you love her? And say, well, she should already know. And I said, no, just tell her you love her. Several times a day, I love you, honey. It just makes a huge difference to say what's in there as opposed to just feel it or let it, or know that it's there. So here is your power, is the power of words and femininity. Because when you say that's a good idea, you're coming from this part of you that appreciates. And that's the female side of us. You know, one of the complaints women have about men is they really are lousy at appreciating others. Uh, I go to conferences all the time, and a large part of the time is spent with the women acknowledging all the people that put the conference together. And you'll see men, some men doing this, but most not. And it's because mm-hmm. men live in a world of competition. You don't want to acknowledge somebody else or appreciate them because that means they're going to get the, the prize and not you. So there's always this sort of competitiveness that doesn't allow men to be as good at appreciating. But that ability to appreciate what you have, to appreciate what just happened, to give value to that, that is our feminine side. So whenever you say good idea, that little light can start to shine out of you of femininity. Okay, that's a that's a good idea. And and just even the tone of a woman's voice is magic to a man. Men can't give this to each other. We give other things to each other. We validate each other by being similar. But we can't get that spark of appreciation. We get that from a woman. And it's one of the reasons we're drawn to women is your power is to see the value in what we do. And how we're, now we're coming back to that concept we talked about earlier, which is needing a man. You know, it, I go out into the world and, and I'm paid for my services. But who pays me the most? The people who need me the most. The people who value what I do the most. That's what boosts testosterone, it boosts a man's self-esteem, and it makes a man feel loved is when there's a world that needs him. Now, you know that as women, instinctively, you know, women are born knowing, this is one of the differences between men and women, your genes, you're born with the knowing that you are needed. You don't need other people to point it out. This is why women tend to become overwhelmed. That This person needs me, this person needs me, this person needs me. That's mm-hmm. something that's a given for women. You don't realize men just sit around because nobody needs me. And that's the <laughs> major that's the major cause of depression in men is when, when men basically whenever they're depressed they're out of work or they feel like nobody needs them. And and for women, they're depressed when they feel that not that nobody needs them, but that everybody needs them but nobody gives to them what they need that they feel alone. And that's a big thing that you have to watch out with that being independent. It's when you feel alone that you're there for everybody and nobody's there for you, it's very hard to make the hormone oxytocin that lowers stress for women and it becomes a precursor for depression, which is feeling like, oh, I'm there for everybody else, but why is it people there for me? Well, that just means, that okay, I need to start learning how to ask for support and being in a place to let people be there for me. And that's a challenge. That's learning how to be feminine, connecting to the feminine side. So the first step, and you will have fun with this because you'll see the power in it as well. It's actually an empowerment of the feminine side of us, not the empowerment of the masculine. The empowerment of the feminine is to motivate others, to raise up others, to inspire others, to bring forth others to support you. And that's another power. That's feminine power. And so this female power, you'll, you'll be wielding it wherever you go when you say to a guy, that's a good idea, and then talk a little bit about it. Uh, and the, another, the next phrase is, well, that makes sense. Kind of like, oh, you just put it together. Oh, that makes sense. And, and mm. the, mas- the masculine side of a woman might be afraid to even say that because it's competing. And you might be thinking, well, if I say that makes sense and I'm appreciating him, uh, <laughs> then I'm building him up. But that's not what happens. That happens between men and men. But when a woman says that that makes sense, a guy goes, okay, she's on my side. You know, she's somebody I want to support back. Even the most competitive work world, you know, you, you'll see many, many women who've made it through the glass ceiling. They they're, they're got there. Uh, by befriending men, and it's often because they're able to, you know, acknowledge those men in a non-competitive way. It's a power that women that women can have, and on, from coming from the pure feminine, which is able to say that's a good idea, or that makes sense, 
And the third, which you just have fun with this, is, wow, you're right. And you don't have to put the wow there, but that's that's more expressive than <laughs> feminine emotion, which is, you're right. And a guy, you watch him, watch his posture. He's going to go, wow. He'll, he'll pause. He'll reflect on what he just said. He'll get a little closer to you. And, and this is the dance of, of bringing, bringing men into your life and connecting to your feminine. When you're connecting to your feminine, then you're putting out a presence which is drawing men in rather than pursuing men. Because that's what you don't want to do. You don't want to go after men. You want to, uh, what I call in my book, um, Mars, Venus on a date, which could be helpful as well. I talk about stages of dating and different strategies and so forth, but the, which is I've been talking about now. It's called proceptivity. You know, we, we know to be proactive is to think ahead to take action. Well, proceptivity is, is what you can do to be receptive. Okay, so it's a being uh, receptive to man. So it's letting him know in various, uh, almost indirect ways, that if he was to take action, he would be uh, appreciated, that he would be welcome. It's almost like... Uh, an uh, uh, exaggerated version of it is the, in a movie I saw once, the, uh, the guy and the girl are standing at the door after a date, and she's looking at him, he's looking at her, and she's kind of looking up to him to let him know that you can make the move for the kiss, but he's a shy guy and doesn't make that move. <laughs> and so she says to him, you know, I just want you to know if you were to kiss me, it would be okay. <laughs> That's being proceptive. <laughs> I, instead of kissing him, let him know that if he kissed you, it would be okay. And it, there's a, a very delicate dance there. And, and a, way, a metaphor to describe that is to think of, at least in this situation we're talking about, the balance of masculine and feminine, to think of the man as the sun and the woman as the moon in that when you give, only give what the reflection is. As he moves to you, you move to him. As he moves to you, you move to him. And in this day and age where men are more feminine, because they're spiritual beings as well, so they have access to both their masculine and feminine. So a lot of men who have become more spiritual, more conscious, they tend to easily go off to their female side. They're going to be more shy, more indirect, and you do have to sort of give them clearer messages uh, that if they were to take steps towards you, uh, that they would be welcome. Men do not always get your signals, so you have to be a little louder in the signals. And, of course, with some men, you have to tone down the signals because they think if you just look their direction that you're inviting them to sleep with them or something. Mm -hmm. So it's a confusing world today, clearly. And as I mentioned before, and I, I want to emphasize this again, if your dating experience in the past has been men who do not commit, and you notice that your pattern is that you date men who turn you on right from the beginning, I mean physically turn you on towards the beginning, then as an experiment, try dating men that don't turn you on in the beginning, but who are, who are interested in you, who are motivated to be with you, that you don't have to do anything to convince them. They're after you, and they eventually, it can happen. I hear this story again and again from women that just... It just happens where suddenly you become turned on to him physically when you weren't turned on necessarily before. And it's because of the nice things he did for you and his attention and his presence and so forth. So let love find its way and not always knowing right away if this is the person for you. For a man, he typically knows right away, instantly, if he could have sex with a woman. And that's always a prerequisite, which is, is there that sexual uh, potential? Having having had that, he could go off and have sex with you, but that doesn't mean he wants to have a relationship with you. And this is often confusing for many women because they feel if they have sex with somebody that it's only going to be somebody that have some level of interest in having a relationship. Now, to backtrack, right. to backtrack with a man, while he's turned on to you, he is interested in having a relationship because that's sort of the the drug effect of being turned on. You're in an altered state when you're turned on. And so when you're turned on, there is this inkling of, well, maybe I want to have a relationship with her. I'm not against having a relationship with her. But then once that uh, that sexual tension is released, there may be nothing and because it never had a chance to develop. And this is the, 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 this is the potential tragedy of having sex right away. I don't want to say it's always this way, of course, but is that, when men have sexual tension, 
they can feel all this affection and warmth and love and feel like, oh gosh, she's fantastic. But when the sexual tension is gone, the only way he connected with her was through sexual tension. So if you go slower in the whole dating process and don't rush right to sex, or at least going all the way with sex, what happens is he's forced to maintain that sexual tension for weeks. And over the time, he's, the sexual tension motivates him to do nice things and be connected and so forth. It just he feels like it. It's an automatic. He feels more affection and love and caring when the sexual tension is there. That that starts creating other pathways of connection to you in his brain. Literally, he's growing neural connectors of memories of, oh, I did that for her and she was so happy and, oh, we did that together. That was so much fun. So now he has all these new connections to you because once sex is over or sex has happened a few times and the sexual tension lessens, what is he connected to you for? The only way he connected to you was through sex. So you want to eventually give, in a sense, you don't fulfill the lower centers until he's connected to you from his heart and his mind. And for a woman, what I suggest is don't fulfill the, the first go for the higher centers. Don't go right to the sexual center at all, but find the guy that there isn't that sexual tension and experience the tension It's sort of, the, of wanting to get to know him, having a sense of admiration, wanting to connect with him, feeling an affection towards him. So it goes from the mind to the heart and then to the to the sexual parts. That tends to be a, a slowing down the process of getting to know somebody before you actually get to know them physically.